Okay, so let's jump straight into our 10 minutes Python crash course. All right. Here are the things that we will learn. Number one is variables. So variables are assigned like any other programming language, like this, you know, we just don't end things with the semi, we don't end statements with the semicolon in Python. Uh, we have A equals to that. Let's say we have B equals to um, a string. So, and AB becomes, first we have to cast A into a string because you cannot append a string and a integer. And now if you print AB, it becomes like this. All right. Now, what do we have? We have imports. How do we import modules in Python? So we just write import and then we write the module's name. Now we use a function from that module like sleep and this will be sleeping for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And we are back here. So I counted a little first and that's how you import things. And now let's do some maths. Okay, so it's basically pretty simple. You just do things like every other things, uh, additions and subtraction are similar to other programming languages. You just, uh, you know, use those symbols. And now this is for multiplication. And we have division like this. Now, if you want integer division, we just, we, you just write this two times. All right, this is pretty neat. Now you just get two, not two point this things. And uh, exponent is also pretty cool. Now a to the power of two, right? Eight to the, my bad, if you want to exponent. Plus three, it's 512. So this is two asterisks are for exponent. One is for multiplication and modulus, like other programming languages, it's the same. You get two here. All right, moving on to comparisons. Comparisons is same as other languages for the most part. Let's say if you have x equals to five and y equals to six and you want to compare x is less than y, this is true because x is less than y and if you have y is less than x you get a false all right now you get x is less than or equal to y that is less than or equal to and x is greater than or equal to y you get a false because x is not greater than or equal to y and if you want to check equals you just write double equals to and it returns false and you write not equals to is just not equals to y and that is true okay so let's get into python conditions that is if else so let's say we have x equals to 10 and y equals to 12 now we check if x is less than y we print x is less and we say if else if x equals to equals to y we say x is equal and finally okay this is not else it's else if elif elif all right now in else we just say what do we say since x is not less or x is not equal that means x is greater so this if we run this we see x is less is printed because x is 10 and y is 12 so x is less is printed so those are our conditions guys and now let's move on to our logic you know so what are the things that will return true if it's just true it will return true if it's true or false that means either one of uh, either one of these two should be true then it will return true so if it's or it's true if it's true and false that means uh, both of if there is and it means both of these statements should be true so this will return a false as you can see here now what are the things that will return false if a statement is false that will return false if a statement is false or false that means both are false right 
here we had one of these should be true so it returns true but if both are false it will return false now finally if we have false and true uh, both of these must be true to return true but if any of these are false it return false because it's and as we had discussed above for and to return true both must be true and for or to return true any one can be true so it's the same here both must be true to return true so it returns a false all right now finally let's move to our good old functions so how do you define a function in python just go def and your function name let's say our function name is welcome and we'll take a name here and we'll just print welcome and then we have our name so we'll say our function welcomes a person all right so how do you call it we just say we just write welcome and the person's name and if the person is batman you just go it says welcome batman so that's how you define a function say you the name is this is the name this is the parameter and this colon is what is the scope of this function all right now also this one beautiful thing about python is lambda so let's say we want to write this in one line so what do we do is lambda this is one line of functions and a is the parameter that will be passed so lambda a now what do we do with a we write print welcome and then a all right so this well stores this lambda so whenever we want to call this thing we use well all right so we say well and now this time it's superman so well superman is welcome superman so this is another way of defining one line of functions in python using lambdas all right so lambda a a is a parameter here and what do we do with a we just print it so this lambda is stored in well and we can just use well later on all right so let's move on to loops again let's say x is 12 and y is 20 all right so first is basic while loop so we just check while x is less than y what do you want to do we want to print x and increase x's value x plus equals to 1 all right so as you can see here it's printed 12 13 14 15 16 18, 19, 19 till our x was smaller than y and y is 20 once y becomes x becomes 20 it's no longer in the loop no longer no longer runs and it is out of the loop so that's there and let's say we can just write the same thing as while okay now first let's reassign y y equals to 25 we can also say while true just print x and x plus equals to 1 that is basically like saying x equals to x plus 1 that is shorthand operator for this so remember x equals to x plus 1 can also be written as x x plus equals to 1 all right and after that we write if x is greater than y then break all right so let's run this as you can see here since our y was 25 and first 20 is printed and because our x was uh, reached to 20 last time 21 22 23 24 25 now this time 25 is printed because till 25 x is not greater than y when once x becomes 26 then it breaks so uh, this is pretty much better to do this but i just wanted to show you the function use of this break so break breaks out from a loop all right whenever there is a break we get out of the loop like here all right now for loop we can go for i in range 0 to 10 now this is a function in python this basically says for a variable while this variable is in this in this range all right so 0 to 10 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 what we can do is but before that 
we need to set i i equals to zero all right so we go for i in range zero comma ten just print i so this is printed now so now for if we do something like this in in function what python does is python assigns i and increments i automatically all right now okay we didn't we didn't need to do this because uh, when we use this in thing here for something in something python actually initializes this i as the first value of this and then increments it until it is in this in this list so we can also say let's say list list equals to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 5 6 you know 4 5 6 7 8 9 and for i in lists print i so again as you can see here this i is initialized as the first value of this list that is one and then it is incremented and it is printed till it's in this list all right so those are while and for functions in python now let's finally our final topic is classes all right so how do we define a class in python you just say class my class all right and then you end it with a colon like functions now there is initializations in python uh, that means what should the basic first uh, variable be initialized to i n i t i a l i z e then what the hell is wrong with me whatever so okay now my bad that class is so i don't know how this is working so what do you do is after writing my class you just define the initialization initialization function so that is in it and this is two double underscores itself and then you need to pass let's say two parameters right a comma b so what do you do is self dot a self dot param one is a and self dot param two is b so this is initialization function in python and let's say okay i messed up again so we go back and let's say we have another function we have a class method method that is that adds those two right so we have def add params right it takes the self and no other functions and it will use these two functions class functions class sorry class parameters all right so it just uh, it just returns rt urn return what do you want to return self dot param one plus self dot param two all right now we have a class ready so let's define an object my object becomes my class we have no keywords here as in some other uh, languages and we just pass our initializer methods so self is automatically passed so we just need to define pass a and b let's say five is a and six is b all right this is my class is not defined all right it's not defined what do you want to do it's not my class it's my class one now my so what do we do we say what's this what will be saved here if we run my object one dot its internal function that is add params add p a r a m s all right okay my object one is not defined it's not my object one it's just my object as you can see here it's not my object one it's my object so we run my object dot add params so what will be here so if we print what's this as you can see here it's 11 because my object dot add params what does add params do? add params adds this classes param a sorry param one and param two now what is my object my object is this class object of this class and what are param a1 and param2 
there was five and six so that's why add params is adding five and six and that is what's this stores 11 because 5 plus 6 is 11 and we are printing this and we get 11 so this was a short run through of how loops conditions and classes and functions and all those things work in python if this helped you thumbs up give this video a thumbs up or subscribe and if you have any problems let me know in the comment section below and good luck with your python journey